moderately tolerated. We gather here today to recognize the union of these four individuals into what YouTube recognizes as a podcast, but is actually a video-based actual play of King Arthur Pendragon 5.2, the Great Pendragon Campaign, the 35th episode. Thanks once again to Gleemo and Big Spoon for resubbing. Real huge ups to Spoon for doing it during the intro sequence so that he didn't do it right now during my introductions. <laughs> it has been a while since we had our last episode enough that was it this morning that someone was like hey you guys are on hiatus right and i'm like no it was yesterday it was yesterday <laughs> look guys when we're on hiatus i will announce it trust me it'll go like this fuck we're not gonna see each other for a couple months we just had some <laughs> scheduling problems over and over again and yeah. let's cut this one off at at, at the pass we're probably not going to be here next week either yeah Listen, I, the only thing I hear out of this is James' kids need to stop playing soccer. That's right. They should be playing lacrosse, a real Australian sport. Well, I'd, I'd like to observe that the last time we did a game where we had to go somewhere with Merlin, one of us, one of our player characters died. And we're right. about to do a game where we've got to go somewhere with Merlin. And Arthur asked us to update all of our family trees. I wonder why that could be. Today's episode could take a full time, or it could end slightly early, because our next episode will be a guest episode. We've got a uh, guest lined up. I'm as mad as Merlin, the magician. <laughs> Just wait until Pondo guests on Imperial Maledictum <laughs> as the rogue trader captain. Trust me, it's going to be awesome. Pierre Cowles, the 13th. No, he's just going to show up as Pierre Cowles, period. End of story. That, he's in the fiction. He's just super old right now Look, at the end of his life. I, I, I want. I just want his mech cells and mech is a kind of every universe, so. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> well, I've already. Well, you, no, you don't, because I've been Isekai and Gropsis in other shows. So you go, Ooh, is this because Arthur likes Skaven? No, it's because I'm trying to make the you Gropsis everywhere. And you're like, Oh, we hate this little rodent dude. And I'm like, But Gropsis was a guy on Pendragon, and we didn't hate him. And then you murdered him. <laughs> you personally murdered him, James. You sent him on a, the, the crusade into France, and then the Visigoths murdered him. <laughs> And the children as well. Unbelievable. This behavior. No, wait, that might have been... Uh, I might be conflating that with Glimo's last character's father-in-law. Yes, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I might be conflating these characters. <laughs> Let's just yeah. assume Grops is just living a happy life somewhere, isekai himself around. But I already know you don't tolerate isekai James. You set the precedent. <clears throat> So we're not going to have Mervyn, the magnificent mech dealer or whatever Bond does. Hey, we're going to get started now. The three of you and your squires, minus your normal companion of Gwent. Gwent is off with the rest of your boys on your retainers fighting for the King Idris against the Count Urban of Devon. You are with Merlin, riding on the road. You have chosen to defend him for reasons that were poorly explained, but you want something from him a, before a, he a leaves really for Dorchester. Bad, a really bad virtue roll. That's the reason. <laughs> Merlin is planning on shipping out of England for what reason he has not quite said yet. There's plenty of time for conversation on the two-day travel to Dorchester as you escort him. You do know that his friends have uh, ill attempted to provide him protection, and his enemies have provided lots of coin for his absolute destruction and murder. So it could be a rocky road. Uh, fortunately, you're not going to Dublin. Merlin is not astride a horse like the rest of you, but he is riding side saddle on a donkey. Just kind of chilling. He's talking the whole time. He's just like, You're really not going to get this one. 
you see in the the way it works out is you have a ukulele and you put it beside you while you're apologizing it's important that it's in frame how do i even explain what being in frame is to you you don't have any context for it or right, just understand that i'm sorry for anything that happened between us the other merlin that you know is the one traveling from the other way to here and i'm going from here the other way right so you couldn't find a horse was that the question yeah wow <laughs> we really spent two hours talking about some weird stuff then i i i can speak to animals i could have summoned a horse but why would i need to when i have this friendly donkey with me you do know a lot of people want to kill you, right? So he strokes his beard. Again, this is the Merlin that looks like the sword and the stone Merlin with the long beard and the big wizard hat. And he says, oh, yeah, sure. But they're not going to. We already know how this story ends because I exist in the future, so I can't die here. That's why I have full faith and confidence in all of you. <laughs> And why did you need us to escort you if you know you're safe? Well, I knew I'd be safe if you escorted me. I knew that I'd be safe because I knew that you were escorting me. That's how it goes. Listen, you have choices in life, but understand that for me, the future is written in both directions. It must be very frustrating for the other Merlin knowing everything that I'm going to do because he always seems to be trying to stop me. But for him, he must have fewer choices because he already knows how whatever he's going to do will end because it has already happened. I'm very confused. My head hurts. So it sounds like everybody knows that you're going to Dorchester. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there any chance you could take ship somewhere else? No. But we could, okay. All right. So do we look at taking a very circuitous route into, uh, in, into, into Dorset in order to avoid what will, uh, what will certainly be people that uh, know where Merlin is going? That might be wise. Did I ever explain what the ukulele is? Stop talking. <laughs> you know, I'm the arch druid of England, right? Are you, or is it the other Merlin who's the arch druid of England right now? We co hold the title. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there, there is very clearly a road from Sarum to Dorchester, which <laughs> seems like, you know, the most obvious path. But I think that other than watering off the path through the modern forest, and I don't want to encounter moderns to the Madronus forest. Um, yeah, I, I don't see a better way. Yeah, we'd have to... Even if we went over to Elminster, we would have to travel through the forest at some point. I mean, we could we could potentially go down the River Avon and try and get a try and get a small boat to go sail on the coast to Dorchester inland. But then the donkey couldn't come. Well, and we'd be traveling through um, Kenrick's lands. Hmm. Well, you with, know, uh, with us. Kinrick doesn't like me. Yes, and we're not paying tribute to him this year, so he doesn't like us either. It's really unfortunate. I did help murder his father. It was I pretty we cool. Just... We used some magic spells to do it from afar. It was really sick. His so father was Vortigern, yeah. Interesting. 
All right, I guess the road it is then. And we'll just travel as fast as possible. Okay. You had mentioned that there was some price you wanted me to pay. A question you wanted me to answer? Yes. Several, actually. I First remember all, agreeing to one, but sure, I can answer some more. If the sword in the stone is not Excalibur, what sword is it? Ah, an excellent question. It's Calibur, the sword of selection. It's a sword that helps choose kings. Actually... It's specifically the sword that helps choose the King of Knights. There's a lot of different swords that help choose kings. They're really just the same sword, and we have just used wizard magic to put illusions on them. But uh, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of the sword Graham, which was wielded by the warrior Sigmund. He pulled it out of a tree. It proved that he was a true warrior and king. Well, technically, it'd be chief of the of the Norse people, and he, get, he gave it to his son, Sigurd. There was a dragon. Norse. He smote Ooh. He smote the sword into ruin, and then it was reforged into a demon blade with a dragon heart. You I know? don't know anyone who claims to be Norse. I don't even know what that is. It's a North thing. Just means North. So the the Northern North. No, no, no. The other north. The easternly north. Okay. The picks have their own problems, right? <clears throat> There's this girl. Her name's Morgan. She's going to be a real ham. Why are you laughing at that? Well, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. So. All right, that's fine. Don't worry. All the swords came from one sword. All right. It's fine. Didn't, didn't we meet Morgan, the, the daughter of um, Uther, Cor yeah. of Cornwall? The uh, daughter, daughter of Cornwall. Yes, 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 yes. But yeah. she was adopted by Uther, along with her sisters. Yeah. Yes. Same Morgan, different Morgan. Uh... I thought it was the one who went north, though, was Orgon. No. Who's married to King Lot right now? Ooh, King Lot, what a piece of work. You know, he is technically the true regent, the steward of England right now. Yeah, well, where's his army to fight the Saxons, so? I would say that knowing what I know about Lot, fighting the Saxons is not on his priority list. Yeah. <laughs> Holding on to Orkney is on his priority list. <laughs> and then he strokes his beard. I mean, is the king of England a man chosen by God, a man chosen by a sword, or the man that men follow? I think that in reality, the latter is the most obvious. Wow. It's a really interesting way to think about it, but it is the man chosen by the sword, actually. You're going to have to trust me on this as the guy who helps distribute the swords that choose the kings. Uh, second question. No, hold on. I want to go back here. Sir Guigan, are you implying that the divine right of knights and the choosing of nobles comes from the apathy of the people who are ruled rather than the magic inherent in the bloodline? I believe that the king is chosen by God and that people will recognize and follow the rightful king. Mm. A king can hold off any sword and claim it makes him king, but if others do not believe him, he will quickly find his, his empire in ruins. That's a real nice argument you've got there, Guigan. Got any evidence to back it up? I don't know how you, you claiming that a sword makes someone a king is any more empirical than what I've just said. I've distributed one sword, and it was to one king. Who was already the king when you gave him the sword. Was he? Yes. Yes. He was, As a matter of record. He was a king, but was he the high king of England? 
No. Well, then, well, uh, well, then you're O for one as well because he never became the High King of England. He did become High King of. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to get into this with you because <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to do it to Pete. That's where you do this thing a second time. I'm going to distribute the sword again in the future, and it's going to be sick. Probably. That's what I hear. Two, point, two points do not make a trend. <laughs> it does make the beginning of a line. <laughs> What's your trend, huh? You say sword, you say divine power distributed by God. Which God? I mean, men followed Constantine, men followed Vortigern. None of them claimed to have a sword which made them kings. It's because they weren't the true king. Yet the country rallied to them, for a time at least. Some of the country. But let's be very clear here. Vortigern's political power came from his alliances with foreigners that he brought over like mercenaries to fight his battles. Well, Constantine then. He was he was made high king by the collegiate. <sighs> what was the next question? <laughs> Where is Excalibur? Oh, Excalibur, right. So the thing is, is that Excalibur isn't really mine per se. I, I am that. the I'm part of the distribution system for Excalibur. It's with its technical owner. Are you sure about that? Because King Oberon seems to think it's missing. Well wait, you talked to King Oberon? Yes. You didn't you didn't make any weird deals with him, did you? Uh I swore myself into service after my death. <laughs> Is that bad? Merlin. You ever Merlin. heard a fairy tale ever? Like even one many. one fairy tale. I've heard many fairy tales. Does making deals with fairies end well? That depends upon the deal. Brownies can be very helpful. All right, so anyway, the sword is owned by Lady Nynaeve, who's kind of holding on to it for the great powers of magic and uh, the reverse side of the world. We don't always get along. <clears throat> no. You not getting along with someone? Can't imagine it. I mean, just wait until you hear about this Lady Vivian, all right? I mean, <laughs> I hear that she's a real piece of work, but I'm probably going to fall for it. <clears throat> hey, he puts a hand, he, he nudges his donkey over, which is much smaller than you, reaches up to put a hand on your shoulder and says, listen, I get it, falling for deals with fairies, all right? I'm probably going to do it too. Wow, service to Oberon. That's going to be bad. What, what did you get out of the deal? I don't even... I don't even the player doesn't even remember it at this point in time. That's because, that's because you offered him your service for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well... I mean, the good news is, is that you're technically going to be alive after you're dead for a little while, if that's your thing. You like that kind of stuff. Any other questions? Maybe some horrifying revelations you'd like to just throw out there out of nowhere? We can go back to ukuleles. I don't think so. Right now, I'm curious. What is the ukulele? So, 
you have to understand. It's from a different part of the world. And he gets describing it to you. The next day, the three of you and Merlin are riding up uh, on the road past a church that is at the top of a hill. It's, you know, the rounded part of the hill. And then the road goes around it like an embankment. So it's almost like the church is on a wall to your right. As you go around the bend, following the edge of the church, you see that Sir Ralgrim the Blade is standing in the middle of the road and has laid out a big log in order to stop your path. And uh, while this is happening, you hear the church bell start ringing, and two more men appear from the church wall above you, and they basically kind of have you slightly flanked. I mean, you guys are on horses and a donkey, but... <clears throat> one of the men is carrying an axe and looks like some sort of Saxon warrior. And the third warrior is wielding a spear and a metal shield and has his body painted in a Celtic way. Nearly, nearly naked going into combat. And that warrior says loudly, Oh, son of the devil has come. Gentlemen, if you'd be off on your way, we'll deal with this wastrel for you, and all can be well in the world. We can't do that. Well, I didn't think you could. Uh, so Merlin begins putting up his sleeves, and he's like, Don't worry, gentlemen. I'll handle these three. And then he stops when his hands are like this, and he goes, Well, this is unfortunate. You hear the howling of a dog and an enormous dog that it has like flaming red eyes, pure black fur begins plodding up from the church. Whenever the church bell is ringing, it begins howling as well. And uh, the man wielding the spear goes, oh, I forgot to mention we brought a church grim with us to deal with any devils. Still confident in your ability to defend this man? Uh, I think Kendrick is just side eyeing Merlin. It's Merlin, like, are you actually Mer a devil? Merlin is sliding off the donkey, so he's paralyzed, but the donkey is still <sighs> moving. So he's like, ah! uh, I think Kendrick is just going to draw his uh, sword. All right, so. Again, there are three men. One of them is directly ahead of you. It is Sir Ralgrim the Brave, who you recently watched kill Sir Naroon. You also have the Pict or not the Pictish, the uh, the Irishy Celtic man and a Saxon warrior. Just in case you guys want to pick your dance partners here. Kanid uh, <clears throat> would be happy to square off with Ralgrim. I'll take uh, Quigan. Do you want the Saxon? Sure. Doing my legendary hatred. Yeah. <laughs> and I will take the Irishman. Now, oh, so no, sorry. I, I, I don't hate this. Sorry. I was weighing the head stupidly high. I've only got 18 hate Saxons. <laughs> only. Yeah. Still, still compelled to roll it, though. Yeah. Okay. Who has the highest glory out of the three of you? Is it still James? I believe well, it's still seven one again. seven one five three. Okay, I'm and you just were just over seven thousand. You were facing the Saxon. Yes. Yeah, Kenid is facing Sir Rodgren the Bathe. Kendrick. Okay, so Guigan, you square up. I don't suppose you're getting off your horse to face this man. He's not horse, is he? He is not horsed. Okay, then I'll get off my horse. Okay. He gives you the time to get off your horse. He does his idle battle animation with his huge axe over his shoulder, slaps his axe against the shield a few times to sort of intimidate you, gives you an up nod and then a down nod, and then he says, Say dire. Then he slams his axe against his chest. Say dire. All right, we're going. Any passions you want to roll here? Oh, I think I have to roll Hatred of Saxons because it's okay. over 16. Sure. So. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, what happened? Wow. 
Okay. What's the what's the side effect of this? Uh, it's been so uh, long. <laughs> It's definitely a penalty on the on all my rolls uh or on the on the skill that i'm using um and on top of that oh, let's see here we've got it in the melancholy one one d6 plus five days lose one point of passion yeah yikes is melancholy still a penalty then or because it used to i know in the old system you have a minus five penalty to all rolls but, but i don't know what I believe melancholy no. only kicks in after the event is over. Okay. But you do lose that passion point, and it's yeah. going to be a rough time for you. All right. Yeah. Well, say Dyer does not have a 16 in his passion, so he doesn't bother. Okay. He is rolling axe. That is an 18. I believe the way axes work is it minuses 1d6 armor. Uh, 1d6 uh, shield. 1D6 oh, yeah. shield. So James rolls a d6. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's his shield. Uh, so of all three of these guys got legendary stats in their skills. No. Okay. Just two of the three. You already know Ralgrim is kind of good, but not like very good. No, you already said he had over 20. He's kind of He's kind of good, but not very good. Okay. He may have been impassioned. Okay. And then damage is 5d6. Eighteen. And what's the what's the one d6 you roll with how much the the shield. shield by? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I will take three then. Oh, I'll take, do I have my... You have your, uh, armor of virtue or whatever, right? Yeah, which is initial... Three. Three. Okay, so then I'll take nothing. But I do need to make a... Guy uh, comes down the hill, he jumps down, comes out swinging. The two of you have pulled away from the other four combatants. Your sword is lashing out. This guy, 100%, is not paying attention to you and is trying to push past you to murder Merlin. Uh, what his beef with Merlin is is unclear, but yeah, he's just constantly using the shield to get you out of the way, just trying to hack you and body check into Merlin. Kendrick, your opponent has a long spear, which he twirls around fancily and kind of taps it against a very small, almost buckler style, like Tarj shield, which he's presenting. He's like pushing it into your face while squaring up against you. He's trying to get it over your shield and just be annoying as hell. And he says, you're facing Rory, son of Gabriel, the chosen hand of God. I'm here to slay the wizard Merlin. Who are you that you would interrupt my quest, my gios? I'm Sir Kendrick of Pitton. No, you're dead. You best sir. No. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. It's really unfortunate you're not Merlin, or I could roll Hatred Merlin here. That's an eight. It's pretty easy, Merlin, because because Kendrick could roll Hatred Merlin too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, two can play this game. Okay. Go ahead. Um, let's see here. So he has an armor rating of one. So you hit him for 15 points of damage. Uh, he oh, takes nice. a major Thank wound you. and basically dies instantly. <laughs> he just fucking collapses to the ground going, Ah! Ah, the pain! <laughs> so it's like... Half in his arm, hanging on. The bone is gone. You're just in the sinew. Like it, you pull it out. Blood is gushing everywhere. He's just like, no, Lord, save me, save me, Lord. Remember when James was like, are we facing three legendary warriors? Yeah. <laughs> just two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob Grimm squares up against you, Kenid. I would like to uh, call upon my honor, since I'm 
defending uh, my charge, Merlin, here. Sure. That's a success. Hate that. So, and my honor is... It's just a plus five unless you crit, right? Uh, you know, I just had it up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah, a plus, it's plus five. five. Yeah, okay. So... I will swing my sword. You come in swinging. He is doing this weird thing where all of your swings, every time you swing, he changes what sword form he's using. And so he's got like his sword up here, then he's got it in front of him. At one point, he's doing this weird thing where like his sword wrists are together with his shield wrists. It's just weird. It's weird all around. But he does beat you by one, which is good oh, enough. Wow. It's good enough where I come from. Let's see here. Damage is 5d6. You get armor and shield against this. So I need to be really good. Big number. Big number. Well, no damage. Be no. <laughs> so what happens is... The two of you are engaging at some point during his rave attack. Uh, it's like the third sword form he shifts to. He slaps the sword like flat against the side of your head. And you're like, ah, and like you can feel it through your chain mail, whatever they call it, chain mail coif or whatever. You're like, ah, ow, my eye. Like, ugh, ooh, that stings. But uh, yeah, like doesn't, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt. hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kendrick, you're free if you'd like to interrupt somebody's duel here. Um, I mean, you could just walk over and finish Rory, son of Gabriel, the chosen hand of God, off. But also, he has he's dying. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the deal with this church grim? You got uh, the black dog, yeah. Yeah, it's a black dog. Well, a church grim and a black dog are not the same thing, but they are very similar. So a church grim... I would need you to roll religion for this one. Or okay. whatever the Pendragon version of religion is. I'm going to guess that that's not going to do it for you. Ooh, so close. No, no, no. I mean, you... It's a Christian thing, for sure. Something it's funny, about... Because I, I, I've been reading Basin recently that, that, that in Basin they reckon that the, the, the Church Grimm is specifically a European christian myth and that the black dog is the uk version of that same myth i think that is true yeah however rather than tell you what a church crib is <laughs> i'm not going to tell you what it is because you <laughs> failed the role i think what, what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to write go over to merlin and like he his... is in the the dust of the trail he's still doing this with his hands but yeah. lying on his side. Uh, is his donkey still like plodding along or has it stopped? No, I think it stopped uh, after a few steps after its rider fell off. <laughs> and it's just like looking back. It looks over at the dying Rory. It's kind of alarmed because it's not a combat trained donkey. It is now paralyzed in fear, not magically, just like... Just in general. <laughs> yeah, there's a dude next to it bleeding everywhere and screaming. And the donkey's like, is this a predator? I think um, I'm going to go over to Merlin, pick yep. him up, and sling him over the back of the donkey like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> okay. The donkey begins walking forward again at 1.2 <laughs> miles an hour. And then uh, I will let my compatriots continue with their duels. Sir Quigan, you continue All to right. face off against Say Dyer. We do. That's good. That's a good one. I have an 11. Yeah, you beat me. I will let you roll for your 1d6 over okay. the shield. That was a great roll, I think. That was an amazing roll. Really, really good. That's going to be 19. Yeah. Uh, well, so wow. in fact, okay. like 16 or 22, so I take six points. Okay. 
Say is and I stay standing. Swiping constantly, just going for these hooking over the shoulder, like maximum power. You're forced to just keep taking steps back and steps back and steps back. There is something driving this person. And to be clear, he's not wearing like chainmail armor. You hit this guy, he's going to be in a Rory Son of Gabriel situation where he goes down in one hit. This is all skill and no fear that you will slay him. Where this guy has been, what battlefields he's been fighting on, he seems to be a pretty notable Saxon warrior. Not like a berserker or anything, but you've never heard of this guy before. Yeah. Kanid. I will do the stabby stab. Okay. Ralgrim is going to switch it up and move into a fighting position while you are trying to stab, where he's fighting Roman style, where he puts a shield out in the front and just goes for thrusts and like try to keep your shields together and stab you around the corner with it. Apparently, it's going to be pretty good at it. It is. He's pretty good at it. Yeah, he's good. It's so funny that James was worried about someone dying while Merlin's evolved because all I could see is Kendrick, like, my guys have got this. Let me just get Merlin up on my shoulder here. Just stand back, light a pipe real quick. We can say, please help me. I don't think 13 damage is going to get through your armor plus shield. It is not. Raugrim is uh, doing these stabs. He does get around your shield and stab you in the stomach several times, but you with your shield are like directing the blade away. He never gets like the point into the chainmail. It's just the blade striking the chainmail over and over again. It hurts. You might have trouble peeing for a couple days with some of these strikes. And your stomach is kind of feeling a little iffy, but none of it is like permanently damaging. And it's not like you aren't also slapping him with your sword as well. I mean, he's taking hits, but none of it is critical enough to end this for good. And we're back to Kendrick making a decision if he wants to is, step in here or let the duels continue. Is Raugrim wearing armor? Yeah, Raugrim's wearing his full knightly estimates. Okay. And but but no no one has like called for duels. We just no. all kind of squared up. Okay, yeah, cool. you just all squared up very nightly like. Um Rogram's on foot. Rogram is on foot. Do I have room for a, a charge? He specifically laid a log so no. down on the road. Okay. Um I will go assist. I'll say sure. yes if you make a horsemanship roll in the process. Oh, that's tempting. <laughs> that's very <laughs> tempting. Um, no, I think I think I've seen Sir Gregan has taken a hit, yeah. and Sir uh, Kanid is basically trading blows evenly. So I'm gonna go help Sir Gregan. Okay, you want to charge, say Dyer, um, or you just want to walk into combat and slay him. No, I'm just. Just to know if you charge, combat. you're gonna have to get back on your horse. That's gonna take a turn anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just gonna walk into combat. Okay. All right. I want to be clear. This man does not acknowledge your presence here and makes no attempt to defend against your attack. Okay. So it's a three three way roll then with him and me and and mm -hmm. Kendrick and Kendrick's rolls unopposed. Yeah. Kendrick's yeah. roll is unopposed. Correct. He's going well, in. Just... Weekend, and this time his new strat is to hook his axe on your shield and try to pull your shield from your hand before bashing you in the face with the, the like spiky end, the point end of the axe. Yeah. This is his the new strats. Okay, 14. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no. 
I was like, I was like, ah, should I, should I just skip to blowing damage? Like, because there's no way I could fail this, right? In my head. And then I went, oh wait, actually, no, I do need to roll because I only have an so 18 sword. Long. I have to see what a fumble does with sword. You drop the sword in the process, right? Is that how fumbles work with sword specifically? Uh, yeah. I, so unless it's against, uh, yeah, I think I think I just drop my weapon because like, because he's not, he's not opposing me so like right. he like catches it like with the backswing of his axe and like hooks the blade and rips it out of my hands Just fumble is a disastrous yeah. stroke of bad luck such as dropping or breaking your weapon yep uh yeah so you go in for the swing we you you have a clear line and in the process of him doing one of these hooks you get hit in the nose and you, your hand goes up, your sword goes out, woo, boo, 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 and it go end over end, and it lands between Guigan and say Dyer, like, and you're like, oh no, my nose, no, my sword. But then there's two people with slashing weapons in the way, and you're like, no. Hey, thanks for providing the physical comedy here, right before Guigan watches us do. Wrong damage. Oh, did I succeed? You did, yeah. Because you rolled, I assume you skilled higher than 13 or 14, because you, you're getting plus is one, that... so it must be 21. Oh, for some reason, I thought your 18 was last. No, because I, yeah. I failed. Okay, all right, okay. That's, I mean, you're right. Yeah. I was just sitting there waiting for you to roll. That's like five damage. Okay, 18. You need... Raugram's uh, winning strat here is to continue sticking his shield as far in your face as possible mm -hmm. and just try to stab you in the stomach over and over again. I've, it, I've crit my dex roll twice in a row, but I cannot get a sword hit in. These dice so hot right now. All right, Raugram beats you again. Isn't this... No, never mind. What's the question? I was trying to remember. Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. not going to be a good that's a good that's, damage that's roll. That's not good. <laughs> that's a lowest right. is a four. First, first, let me check for knockdown. Yeah. All right. I do not get knocked down. Uh, is there, is so I think... Have you got a slice of 24 or higher? Oh, you, need to roll, you need to roll dex. But he rolled a seven oh. regardless. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh. He succeeded. Well, I, 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 I thought you said you didn't need to roll. He didn't need to. He didn't need to roll. Um, okay, so 24 minus 16 would be eight. So I take eight wounds. That's not a insignificant amount of... You damage. can feel your chain mail like one or two of the links are like piercing into your stomach right now and you're like bleeding inside your armor down your legs it's deeply uncomfortable and unsettling as he just hammers his sword into your stomach over and over again this is not an efficient way to kill somebody but it is terrifying to watch it happen to you Raugrim is like almost face to face with you as he's using his shield to overbear you and you can hear him say killing people and i'm gonna enjoy killing you too just like i killed your friend and when we're done here i'm gonna kill kendrick too and then i'm gonna kill guigan but he's saying it the whole time because like, <laughs> you're still stabbing each other constantly. <laughs> but we have to have our moment where the two characters talk on the battlefield Otherwise, it's just going to sound like this. <laughs> you know, the realistic way it's going to sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. We're back around. Sir Kendrick, you have no sword. You can call your squire for a backup weapon, or you can rush in there and try to grab your sword again. I will call my squire for the mace. Okay. The d20 roll versus your squire's age success i want to imagine this is happening in slow motion it's your squire Kristen, right uh Terwin. Oh, Terwin. yeah 
in slow motion, like like Olympic torch style, like running towards you with the mace. Sir Kendrick! Like tosses it the last bit. You're doing some sort of like turning thing and you grab the mace out of the air while turning just in time to like block a wild uh, axe blow from Dyer. Um, and can I uh, call upon my loyalty order of the axe passion? Did you already call upon a passion this? I have event? not. Then yes, you can. However, I will note, I believe the squire roll is your whole turn. Is it? Okay. I believe that your whole turn is having your squire re-equip you. Yeah, getting getting a weapon, basically. Yes. Okay, weapon. Uh, but this, this will... If, you can if still I succeed, this, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. So my, my mace isn't passion now. You're watching Quigan and Kneed get yeah. unusually okay. demolished. Im yeah. Im improbably demolished. And uh, you're you're in this now. You're in it. Okay, Quigan. This guy hooking your shield with the axe and stabbing you is working really well, so he doesn't see any reason to switch it up. Just roll one here real quick. No, he wins. Okay. We're doing it again. Pulls your shield out of line. I don't think so that's going to hurt you. I will have... No, it's, I, 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 it's nothing enough to not have me. 17 is what my, my defense is, but the minus two, so... <clears throat> Does not be down either. You are fighting him with the shield. He pulls it out of line, and then he's like, he has to use the flat side of the axe to like slap you in the face. You roll with it, and you know it hurts, but again, not enough to damage you. He is doing very well for a guy wearing leathers, essentially. Kaneed, you and Raugrim, basically right on top of each other. No space between you. He is still just trying to get in there and stab you in the stomach. He has said some really ominous stuff to you about murder. What do you want to do? Uh, let my sword talk for me. Oh, yes, of course, Crit. of course. That's bad for me. That's bad. I guess you crit too. Yeah, I need a crit too. I need a crit too. I do not. Okay. I'm going to take uh, whatever your damage is doubled. So probably 10 or 12d6. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh... 10d6. So, first set of damage is 25. Second set is 16. Okay, so, so that's, that's 41. Uh, 41. 41 points of damage. Okay. You get, me... your, you get your shield, though. It's, there's no possible way that could matter. <laughs> uh, there is no realm where he does not die from this, I believe. So, you... You know what? How do you take him down? With all of his, like, stabbing and close-in combat, he is, for a single instant, very vulnerable to a counterattack. What do you do? How do you finish this guy off and basically one-shot him? Um, Kinead was having a, having a fun time. He was enjoying the the sport of swordcraft. He loves, you know, he loves the sword. And then Rogram made him bleed, and Kinead was not having any any playtime was over, and he just stabs Rogram in the neck. Rogram briefly looks at you with emotion, like actual hatred, as he collapses to the ground and dies. And it's going to take him a little while. Just like Rory in the background, who's still screaming uh, in sort of broken Irishiness. Browgram isn't screaming because he's been stabbed in the neck, so he can't make any noises other than gurgling for the next few seconds. But um, yeah, I mean... This is the end of the legend of Ralgrim the, the Blade, a guy who commits himself to the cause of justice so that he has a reason to walk around and murder people whenever he wants to. And you have just ended that legend, the budding legend. So anyway, Kaneed and Kendrick, what do you guys want to do this <laughs> turn now that it's just Quigan and... Gonna... Say Dyer, who I honestly did not think was going to last this long. I'm going to smash 
uh, say dire <laughs> with my with my two handed mace. I'm gonna stab. Kaneed. Uh, Kaneed is gonna spend a round catching his breath. Okay. I just need Kendrick to fumble a second time to stay in this. Oh, I just missed again. <laughs> Okay, Kendrick did not fumble, so I'm about no. to take a lot of damage. I did not fumble, so. Just need one of those 24 damage rolls here real quick. Just need a 24 damage roll. 14, no. I take one point, because I already got my shield. Okay, let's see here. My guy has an armor rating of 3. You are therefore killing 15 points of damage to him, which is more than his major wound. And that is higher than his knockdown. So we gotta test that real quick. He does not go down from that from what is going to be a major wound. My question is, what are the rules for Major Wound here? So, um, he needs to make a... I believe he needs to make a test against um, the amount of hit points he has left. Yeah. Or go um, unconscious. Or go unconscious. So he needs to roll lower or higher than this? Higher, he right? needs to roll lower. No, he needs lower. to roll lower. It's, it's, yeah. He, crit, he got 15, and he has 15. Okay. Or no, he has 16. So he doesn't yeah, so, pass. So out. he can he can keep uh, fighting. Thirty one hit points. Out, took out, out of the battle, he's gonna make an aging check. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great. If he survives, he looks around. He's realizing now that his allies, who he never put very much faith in to begin with, are dead. A mace just hit him and broke something that he needs inside him to be alive. He takes his axe and he puts it spiky point down into the ground and drops what passes for a shield and holds his arms out like this. Do you yield? Just kind of looks at you. Um... Kendrick will collect his weapon. <clears throat> are you oh, worth anything? Take my sword. Yeah, I, I asked Sadire, are you worth anything? He, Do you have... He says some things, but you don't speak no, it. You don't Saxonic. speak in his language. Yeah. 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 He just smiles. But he doesn't have any Vegemite because that's not gonna be discovered for a thousand years. So um. I will grab some rope from my pack and like Go gesture full for him. and dragons. Yeah, gesture well gesture for him to, to right. hold his hands together and I'll and I'll tie him up. Okay. And have him walk behind one of the horses. Perfect. He is, you know, he's a Saxon. He knows mm -hmm. what taking uh, prisoners is like. What about the the church grim? So the church grim remains in place until the bells stop ringing, um, which is you know several minutes or mm -hmm. twelve bells, and then at that point you hear Merlin go, "Okay, I'm gonna take care of. Why am I on the back of a donkey?" Oh, my elbow hurts so much. Ah, oh, church grim. That makes sense. Do you speak Saxon? Yeah. Ask this man if he's worth uh, a ransom. Okay. He starts having a conversation with the man. And he says, oh, delightful man. And a great conversation with him. He does say that he's worth the value of any ten men. But I believe that if you wanted to get a ransom for him, we could probably get, like, a pound or two back. You know, a libra. Okay. You know, he's no chieftain's son. Mm. He's strong, though, apparently. 
I mean, he fought the three of you. And didn't die when I hit him, so... Somewhere in the background, Rory is finally gurgling <laughs> his last breath. <laughs> Sorry, were any of you two good at first aid? Uh, I was I, just about to say the same. I think yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, I've, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm a 10. You're 11. I'm also 10. Okay. Cool. I'm a 10 hey, as well. I don't want you touching me. Um, Shall I patch you up, sir? Okay. Regan? Yeah, you, you can do three separate rolls on me. Okay. And one, and one on one on. Um... Lino. Tens don't normally let eights talk to them like that, but I'll let it pass. Ah, <laughs> uh, so this one fails. Ah, uh, second uh, is a success. Third one is also a success. Okay. Well, you can just not, my third one's only one wound, but if you roll a D three for the one that you succeeded on, three, three, cool. So, and then the one for Sir Kneed, ah, uh, fail. All right. What day of the week is it, AP? Limo, <laughs> roll a D seven, and we're starting the week on a Sunday. As the calendar foretold. It is Sunday, Sunday today, so you have six days before you can heal. You gotta wait a whole week, Wigan. I'm sorry. It was Sunday. What a black day. I mean, technically, there'd be seven days to wait for the next right. Sunday. Depending it's... on whether you heal in the morning, the dawn, or the night. I think you feel the, the dawn of the Sunday, though. Let me turn towards the camera and say, I guess you could really say that you've got seven days to die. That's our wow. current community server right now. <laughs> I you, This went a lot faster than I thought. You didn't have as many questions for Merlin, and I did, you didn't let me do any of the hijinks I wanted to, including the YouTube <laughs> apology speech. We, we, we still have we still have time before we get to Dorchester, man. I mean... No, this is it. This is Dorchester now. We we fast forward, fast traveling to Dorchester. I mean, Merlin can talk as much as he wants. I won't listen to it, but he can talk. <laughs> we okay, so we fast travel to Dorchester, and he goes, "Wow." Ah, Guys, thanks for letting me talk as much as I wanted to. You know, I had a lot to say, a lot of weird prophecies I had mixed up in there. I mean, what kind of man starts a war for a hundred years? That's all I'm saying. It, don't worry, it'll be significant later. Thanks for getting me here. In the back very welcome. ground of the docks, you can see that there are people loading a ship, getting ready to go. And there is like a shanty man singing a song about um, about the uh, Prince King Aurelius. Um, and Merlin's going up. Oh, that's got to be my ship right there. You know. One moment, Merlin. Yes. <clears throat> there was a promise of some reward for it's true. You here. A reward without value. I believe it was a reward. Uh, beyond measure. It's true. He puts a hand on your shoulder and says, before we left, I talked to your family chef, the one who runs your kitchens. When you return, you will find a reward without measure waiting for you. Let me ask you this, my friend. He puts his hand all the way around your shoulders and is looking out over the rising sun, to glittering over the sea, the ship kind of in the frame, he, he gestures out towards it and says, Have you ever sat down to have a meal with your family and your estate? And then it's just cold because it takes so long to cook everything for your whole family. And it's all got to come out at the same time. I don't think so. You've never been to a feast where that happens? I mean, they're cooking for hundreds of people. There. It, did, it did happen at Sir Rufo's tournament. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so... I have shared with your chef the secrets of cast iron hot plates. You and your family line will always bear this secret. The ability to make food stay hot, but not too hot. You can't eat it, 
not too cold that uh, the bacteria grows on it. You got to keep it inside the range, USDA approved. I don't know what this Usta is, but Usta, it's thank a, you. It's in the future. It's an a alchemical society. Mm -hmm. I see. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry. They aren't going to be the ones to discover to turn lead into gold. I mean, you can, you can do that, but you just need the power of the sun. Good luck on your travels, Merlin. Yeah, you, know, you never even asked me where I was going. I don't care. <laughs> where we know he's going, he's, going, he's, he's, going, he's going to the continent, isn't he? He's leaving. He's he is leaving. going to the continent. So as he leaves, he puts his hands over his head like this, and he just does like a booty shaking swag over to the ship, and the ship's sailing master is like, "Ah, you must be the wizard Merlin. We're just about ready to sail." And Merlin's like, "I'm always on time, baby." <laughs> In, uh, in, in like, the noble knight wizard. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in my Pendragon campaign, we get to the scene where Merlin sort of says to the group, like, this is the last time you'll ever see me. And the group's like, no, bullshit. We'll, we'll definitely see this guy again. I wasn't going to pull that on you. <laughs> I feel bad because, again, we did this so fast. We're only getting part of an episode here. But... We are at the perfect place for our guest episode next time. On your return trip from Dorchester, the three of you are riding along the road when you, you know, it's late at it's late in the evening. You have to stop somewhere, and you stop at a manor that you see that there are numerous horses outside, but there are three banners belonging to three different knights uh, being, like, guested. There are other people staying at this manor this night. And as you approach, um, one of the like page boys is like, "Oh, more more knights come to stay. We got space for you. We're just sitting down to dinner. For some reason, Good. I'm Cockney, even though we're in like the southeast part of England. Can you can you tell me, Paige, who are the other knights staying here? I could tell you, but." I'd prefer that the three of them tell you themselves in the next episode when the three guests arrive. Because there's going to well. be three guests. <clears throat> Very well. Uh, stable the horses. Of course, my lord. AP activating hard mode for scheduling by bringing in three people. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was actually surprisingly easy to get uh, these three. The, the, listen, the real problem was is that they checked in with me this week. They were like, are we guessing today? And I'm like, no, we still haven't actually had the Merlin episode yet. <laughs> wow, James and the Thermomix. You're never going to let that thing die, huh? I need, it's it's a warning. It's a, I need to let people know what you know what a dangerous cult it is. Oh, let's see now now I'm like with the with the three guests because I know there are at least two other shows that Game Master either either there are three night PCs or Game Master included there are three people total. But I think I think it's the former rather than the latter. No, I, th I think AP's got some real surprises. I think I think I, I could imagine Savannah might be one of the guests. <laughs> <laughs> one of the guests is Madison with a Y, but it's not where you think. <laughs> well, listen, lining Savannah up as a guest would take incredible gumption on my part. Is all I'm saying. I don't. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this one off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe he's the one that did the embrace me like a true Christian as part of your like message you yes, see when you come up, which yeah. means that she is more base than any of us for sure. Uh -huh. Someone said that to me yesterday. I was at Soundwave, like I was just doing something and he was like, embrace me like a true Christian. I was like, oh no, is he coming up behind me with a knife? 
Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's real grim, dark James behavior right there. My, I think what I like most about that scene is that apparently everyone but me sensed that there was ill intent and that it was going to go badly. And I was like, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hug you. That's totally normal. None of this dialogue is ominous. <laughs> I, I was, me, I was Mr. Betrayer. <laughs> I was pretty shocked. I was super shocked. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Well... It may be a short episode this time. And next time, the guests may end very quickly. It's not clear. <laughs> the guest portion of the episode could either be full length or it could be over very quickly, depending on your choices. But uh, our guests know what they're in for. All right. Any, any outros, any last minute thoughts here? It's great to see you all. So good to be together for an hour and 15 minutes here. <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. thought the Merlin part would last longer. I didn't meme enough. The fight was longer than I thought, and the talking was way shorter than I thought. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know we were shutting down so much, you know, so much role play with with Merlin. So, <laughs> listen, yeah. hating Merlin is a choice that I fully agree that your characters encompass. I do want to note that we did kind of skip over the melancholy section. Yeah, that's because it now. would be a pain in the ass to role play it out right now. But I think we're going to do it after the guest thing. Like, when you get back home, you're going to get back home and be like, I could have died there. I could have died there. And my mission was bad. Like, what was I doing defending me? Well, we'll do a thing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to brush up on the melancholy rules. I think it's the, still the one where you have to be led around by a lady to all your meals and shit. Well, you have to be led around. And if, okay. if, a, if a lady snaps you out of it, then... There's no conflict, but if a man steps you out, there's a chance that you'll try to go them. Right. So. It's a good thing you have a wife, and then you have a work wife. Yeah. 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 We just need to just be careful that, that the whole melancholy scene doesn't actually involve the wife appearing on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what stops you out of it is your two wives talk to each other in yeah, the same scene, it. and they <laughs> fail the Bechdel test. Yeah, we, we've got to we've got to hire a hand model to come in and do the slap from off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Who was, is it Powerpuff Girls that had the secretary for the mayor that you never see her face? I feel like that has to be who we get. I've never watched Powerpuff Girls, sorry. That's okay, it's not your generation. It also wasn't my generation. <laughs> um, any glory for escorting Merlin? Uh, you do get 25 glory for escorting Merlin. And then you will all split 40 glory three ways. So whatever that comes out to be. Something short of 15. Repeater. No, repeating. You know, let's just say it's 15. <laughs> so 40 <laughs> glory in total for the Merlin escort mission. Uh, and then, not that the other two of them are famous in the lands of England, but Kanid does get the title of Slayer of Raugrim the Blade. It and doesn't I, come with any additional fame, but you can just tell people that you slayed Raugrim the Blade and they'll know who you're talking about. In the same way that Kendrick is known as the bearer of the Blade of Lucius II. I thought he was a bad wolf. So he's a got a lot of titles. Lot of <laughs> I'm, I'm the, mad, the mad bear, the young wolf. Mad bear, sorry. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I have some of them written down. There was the um, whole song uh, about him and his dick. Got the hammer. <laughs> um, so uh, his original. Well, that's, that's just a distinctive feature. So the Mad Bear, the Young Wolf, um, the and the ancestor of Lucius, uh, and then the Bear of the Blade of. Uh, I forget the name of the general, but yeah, he's got he's got lots of titles. What about the song about his penis? Yeah. Clearly, clearly he shouldn't be pole boring anytime soon. <laughs> wow, what a reference. Yeah. Way, to, way to make it topical, James. What a <laughs> reference. Great. Thanks so much here. Well, we started talking about dicks, so we got demonetized. But I, I'm i the one who mentioned it first, so I'll take the hit on this one. Just like that guy. I took the hit. <laughs> Have you seen the painting? No. Yes. I have. I'm, I'm so worried now. So 
someone someone did an oil painting of him, but they made sure they like they they built up the paint on his crotch so that it like bulges out of the out of the picture. <laughs> wow, what dedication! I assume you have to wait for it to dry and then apply the next layer. You can't just like paint really heavily one time. Well, friends. Will Savannah be guesting next episode that is in two weeks or possibly more? I guess we'll find out who our guests are. Could it be from one of the other active Pendragon shows? Will it be a cabal of game masters? Or could it be people that you never thought you'd see here? We'll find out next time in Kick Arthur Pendragon episode 36. Whoa, the bye screen!